I bring, I bring warm greetings from the United States. Today, we're going to explore and cross four bridges to our genius and our highest potential. The first bridge is the bridge that we all share, the bridge to the past and the future, the bridge to everything that we desire, that we wish to bring into our lives and light the world with, is, of course, the present. And all power, all potential, at any moment in life, lives in this moment, lives right now. And when you take now and turn it around, it's won. And we want to win in life in every way. And the way to win is to become one with the present. Think about what that means, to become one with the present. To win the moment, we need to unify with it. And the way we do that is through the breath something that many of us take for granted. Nature's language, when we animate our breath with nature's language, with nature's intelligence, we access a whole new dimension of potential in our lives. The golden ratio, a principle that guides all matter, all energy in the universe, can be brought to our breath to access our hidden power. It's essentially a ratio of five to three. The Fibonacci sequence is the DNA of the golden ratio, the sequence of numbers that begins with one plus one equals two, and then three and five and so forth. Nature uses these numbers at every scale, from the micro to the macro, to plants, galaxies, our DNA at every level. Every scale in our body. Look at your arm for a moment. Consider your arm. Consider the ratio from the tip of your finger to your wrist, your wrist to your elbow. It's that five to three ratio. Nature doesn't do 50-50. Nature doesn't like even. Nature likes dynamism. Nature likes to have action, to have power. And the power comes from the golden ratio. Now, one of the things that is concerning modern times, of course, is the advent and the increase of artificial intelligence, AI. And the proliferation, as we've heard and we know and are experiencing every day, of technology. Well, the antidote is NI, nature's intelligence. Nature is the greatest teacher, the greatest healer, the greatest doctor, the greatest inspirer. And when we balance AI with NI, we can navigate with greater grace and health and balance. So nature's secret nutrient is the golden ratio applied to our life. And it turns out that it can be applied to every arena of our daily lives, our breathing, our diet, our movement, our sleep, everything that we do daily can be tuned so we can realign and invite nature's intelligence into every aspect of our lives. This has been an area of research for over two decades of mine and my, my fellow researcher, a doctor in the United States, and modern medical science is now validating that when you align your body, your mind, your spirit with the golden ratio, you tap your full potential. So, the breath. Most of us breathe unconsciously and, to a certain degree, evenly. In to five, out to five. In to five, out to five. It's even, there's even a name for this. It's called box breathing. Now, how many people want to breathe in a box or live in a box or have box thinking? How can we step out of that? Well, it turns out that when we bring this golden ratio to our breath, not five and five, but three on the inhale and five on the exhale, we access and activate this power. So let's take a few moments now and synchronize with nature by breathing into three and out to five, following the pattern. So let's now begin. Breathe into three, then out to five, then into three, out to five, then into three, and out to five. Congratulations.
We're in the moment, and the future is always now. So, the first prescription, the first Rx for this bridge is breathe mindfully. Don't breathe on autopilot, breathe mindfully, and integrate the golden ratio into your breath daily. The second bridge is a process I created for my work with corporations, but it proves enormously valuable for anyone at any stage in life, the bridge process. It begins with, where are you today? What is today in your life? If you had to come up with one word, what would that word be for you? Then, the ideal future. What would future perfect be? Think about it for a moment. What is something you greatly desire in your near future? And feel that feeling for a moment, not just the thought, but feel it with your heart. How would it feel if you were there right now? Of course, there's always going to be some sharks, some blocks, some challenges in the water. What might those be? What could hold you back or slow you down from reaching your ideal future? And my favorite part, the bridge points. What would it take to bridge from today to your ideal future? What qualities, what resources would it take to help make this journey most valuable and enjoyable? Don't expect you to read this, but this is the process I did in anticipation of being here with you. On the front end, excited and challenged, yes, and butterflies. We all have them. The ideal future is a valuable, actionable talk and uh, meaningful connections, one-to-one -one with all of you, sharing, serving, and lifting, and the blocks. Well, there's the perfectionist monster, there's the grim doubter. Uh, there is sometimes too much detail. Have to be mindful of that. Those are the sharks. And the bridge points, well, the key ones for me were be present, remember to breathe, let spirit rain down, and keep it simple. Keep it simple and keep those butterflies in V formation. So that's the bridge process. The third bridge is the promise and power of chaos. Now, all of us have experienced chaos. Here's a new way to view it, to turn it into a point of power. We're going to look at it through the science of cymatics, which is the science of how sound, effects, and patterns matter. This has been pioneered by a Swiss scientist named Hans Jenny, and when I first learned of it, it was through his experiments of filming what happened to a drop of water on a glass specimen si slide. With a sound generator attached, Hans vibrated that drop of water with a tone, let's say 200 hertz. So it was mm. At 200 hertz, there was a pattern, we'll call it a square. And as long as the current stayed constant, there was a square in the water. But then Hans doubled the frequency. He doubled the frequency, and for about a second, there was a phase where there was no pattern whatsoever, total chaos in that drop of water. But a second or two later, there was a new pattern at a higher frequency. So we went from mm, a new pattern. We'll call it an octagon. More intricacy, more beauty, more integration. And each time the frequency was increased, a new pattern of greater complexity and intricacy would emerge to the point where when dogs and cats hear, and humans don't, what appeared in the water was a pattern of a faint stained glass window from a great cathedral. So what happens when we encounter chaos? Well, so often, we overfixate on the chaos, the transition stage here. We fixate on it, and oftentimes, it's like a deer in headlights. We want to go back. Has anyone ever experienced this? Want to go back? Well, life is always moving forward, and life is always in the present. So another approach here is to realize that that transition stage is a bridge. It's a bridge from uh, one level of existence or frequency to a next. Chaos is always a golden bridge to the next level. And a way to navigate it with greater grace and purpose and confidence is to visualize the next level, the ideal where we want to be and take our, our full focus off the chaos that we may be experiencing as we transition. Here's the experiment, a piece of it.
Isn't that remarkable? One pattern to the next. The prescription here is simple. Focus on and embody. Feel in your heart what you most want in the moment, now. The future is always now. Your desired next is in how you feel and picture it today. The fourth and final is what I call fractal cognition, the ability to see the whole in the part. And it's based on another branch of chaos theory, the fractal, which is small parts that are self-similar patterns of a whole. Like uh, a small piece of broccoli represents the whole head. So let's take a moment here and practice this art of finding the greater picture in the part. Does anyone know what that is? Every, it's right there. Your brain just recreated what's right there. It's a piece. How about that? Sistine Chapel, correct? There you go. And then here, what's this? <laughs> what could this be? By MRI. <laughs> of course, it's the Great Seal of Romania. How about this? A rose. A rose by any other name, exactly. And then here. Of course. My favorite drawing subject as a child. All right, so fundamentally, why do we want to engage and activate fractal cognition? Think differently, think bigger, bring the pieces together. Well, our brain, as we learned from Vlad, we've got two hemispheres. And hey, the left side is more about logic and time and being rational. It's more about tension, being still. And it's about analysis, breaking the parts into finer pieces to try and find meaning. The right side is more about intuition and space versus the left on time, creative, art, and music. It's about relaxing, it's about connecting the dots and bringing things together. And the corpus callosum, there's this bridge that connects both hemispheres. And for many, the traffic is uneven or even one way. And that's to a large degree because since children, we've been raised to think more regimented, more linearly, breaking things into pieces. And so, to fully tap our power as human beings and as the family of man, we want to get that traffic going both ways. When we do that, it's not just half a brain and half a brain is a whole brain, it equals the Einstein approach squaring the power of our brain. And so, the prescription here is look for the small parts in your life, the small signs, the small indications that point to a greater whole, practice integrative thinking, and sensing and seeing bridge thinking. So, the blowing up the bridge. I want to spend a few moments on this because there's more than one way to blow up a bridge. Uh, this individual here is running in a blizzard in New York City. In fact, New York City's greatest blizzard, the coldest blizzard. And uh, he's running to demonstrate to himself blowing up a bridge of limitation, of I can't do this and perhaps being an example to himself in the world. Well, that, that gentleman is me. Um, I had a lot of people doing the, the cross here in, in New York City doing this, but I, uh, I tend to push the limits. I want to blow up those bridges of limitation that I have about what I'm capable of, both for myself and as an example in the world, and to help us remember our latent and inner genius. So where can you step outside your comfort zone, blow up a bridge, like the River Kwai, blow up a bridge that has held you back. Think about that today. What could you do to blow up a bridge of limitation that would open up a whole new potential in your life? So we're presented fundamentally with a choice. What bridges, what patterns and habits do we blow up in our lives? What bridges do we restore and renew that perhaps we've neglected at one level or another? What bridges do we need to build with people, with events, with the world? The bridges that need to be built, that we can start, even as one person, to lay the first cornerstone. And remember always that we have the power to be the bridge. Like being the change in the world, each and every one of us is a bridge. And so how can we leverage and utilize that power to be the bridge and to serve without attachment? This is one of my key maxims in my business and my life. How can I serve you without thinking what's in it for me? And so as we step back and as we take the bigger look at the power of the bridge metaphor in our lives, I want to leave you with a bridge, a picture of a bridge from one of my home states, Massachusetts. 
the Bridge of Flowers. This is a very popular destination in the northeastern United States. It was, uh, it was re restored from a former train bridge, and they planted hundreds of species of flowers on it. And the metaphor, I think, is we're on a bridge of life, and let's remember to stop and smell the roses. Let's remember the beauty that's all around us in every moment. And let's never forget our power as individuals and collectively to truly light the world. George Bernard Shaw wrote long ago, some see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. So my invitation, my challenge to you is why not build those bridges that link our heart, our mind, our spirit in our dreams? Why not blow up those bridges that no longer serve us? And why not come together to build a bridge of light, a bridge of kindness, of compassion, of love, and of wisdom? Let's include nature in the equation, and let's include our highest vision for the world. Thank you very much. Great fortune and health to you all. Mutsumes for most. Mosfor and Sanitate Maximus.